critters. As the first movie's trailer suggests, there is nothing cute about them. These sinister, creepy, and carnivorous little furballs from outer space are hell-bent on causing as much chaos as possible. These merciless aliens known as Krites have many freaky abilities, including rolling themselves into a ball, and when there are many of them, they can join forces into one deadly giant rampaging ball, and they can also shoot out poisonous spikes from their body. Bottom line is, they may look small and cute and fluffy, but you do not want to encounter one of these monstrous little assholes, or otherwise your dinner, as these guys have a rampaging appetite. I mean, what's not to love about critters? It's about furry little monsters that eat people. That is an instant recipe for awesome soup right there. So, what the hell? Because I am a big softy for evil, cute furry creatures who all form a giant ball, today I am going to explore 10 things that you may not know about these little hungry bastards, as we look at 10 amazing facts about critters. So let's check it out, of course. Number 10. Critters Follows the Gremlins Trend Critters is a part of the Little Monsters trend which started in 1984 with Gremlins, which saw destructive little monsters destroy a small town. The movie helped create the PG-13 rating, and was a massive success, and started off a new trend in movies where we would see mischievous monsters run amok and cause as much destruction as possible. The first Critters came out in 1986, two years after the release of Gremlins, and thanks to Gremlins had a PG-13 rating. And other movies which followed this trend include Ghoulies, Munchies, Hobgoblin, Troll, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and The Puppet Master, to name but a few. However, scriptwriter and director Stephen Herrick claims that Critters isn't a Gremlins ripoff, and that the movie's script was written along with the movie going into production before Gremlins was even released. However, he does admit there were some rewrites made after the release of Gremlins, so who knows? I mean, the more the merrier, really. There can never be too many movies about evil, vicious little monsters as far as I'm concerned. Number 9. The Voice Behind the Critters One of the voices behind the mischievous oddballs was Corey Burton, who has provided his voice on many other projects, including lending his voice for Disney's Aladdin and The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and he has also provided his voices for the Transformers cartoons and Star Wars Clone Wars. And if that wasn't impressive enough, he even voiced the villain Brainiac in several episodes of the animated Justice League series. So in other words, this is a voice of many talents. <laughs> for the Critters sequel, Critters 2, the main course, he created a language for the Krites, which was a mishmash of Japanese and French. Number 8. Famous Faces The four Critters movies have seen several famous actors come face to face with the hungry little monsters. Some being well established actors, and some would go on to become bigger actors later on. Dee Wallace starred in the first movie. Fans of cinema would recognise her as the mum from E.T. the Extraterrestrial. The first Critters movie also featured a young and fully haired Billy Zane along with his cringy 80s rat tail. The fourth Critters movie featured Brad Dourif, 
who provided the voice of Chucky from the Child's Play franchise. Ah, it's so nice to see some crossing of horror movie franchises there. But the real cherry on top of the hairy cake is Critters 3 featured a very young Leonardo DiCaprio. You're not a crybaby too, are you, sport? Huh? And I don't think he's going to be asking to draw these little hungry monsters like one of his French girls. However, it's really weird seeing a young Leo in an obscure cheesy horror movie sequel. Hang on, Billy Zane and Leonardo DiCaprio. Is there a rule that says before you get on board the Titanic, you must come face to face with the critters or something? Number seven, the critters really don't like E.T. Considering E.T. was a massive hit in the early 80s, it seemed that many fantasy movies were referencing the hell out of this film. And it seems that Critters was no exception, as not only did the movie star Dee Wallace, who as mentioned was the mother from E.T., along with other small references, but there is also a scene in which, during a moment of havoc and destruction, one of the Critters discovers an E.T. plush doll and tries to communicate with it. before destroying the toy. Poor innocent plush E.T. never stood a chance against these frightful beasties. It's almost like Critters is saying, there, take that E.T. The aliens in this film don't bother with any of that phone home nonsense. No, they are way more badass. Number six, Ghostbusters reference. Oh yeah, not only in the original Critters do we see an E.T. reference, but also a Ghostbusters one, as we see two of these intergalactic bounty hunters searching the town. And they are pretty radical. I mean, come on, we didn't see Boba Fett with a mullet this glorious. Anyway, in one scene in particular, we see these space hunters enter a bowling facility, where lo and behold, we see one bowling team that has some very interesting logos on the back of their shirts. This is the logo, and as you can see, they are just a bowling modification of the Ghostbusters logo, adding yet another cheeky pop cultural reference in this movie. So, I guess in this movie's universe, someone has combined their love of Ghostbusters with their love of bowling. Yeah! Number 5, Frank Welker turned Critters down. Frank Welker is a legendary voice actor who has had a huge career providing voices for animated series such as Scooby-Doo, The Real Ghostbusters, Transformers, Inspector Gadget, The Simpsons, and Futurama to name but just a few of his efforts. And of course, he provided creature voices for Gremlins. And it's probably for this reason that Mick Garris, the director of the second Critters movie, wanted to have Welker on board to voice some of the troublesome, hungry aliens. But Welker turned down the offer. Which, I don't know, I'm kind of happy about this. Because it just wouldn't have been right seeing Critters running around and talking like Gremlins. <laughs> Yeah, that's just not right. Number four, Critters and their limited PG-13 killings. Considering the movie Critters was utilizing the newfound PG-13 rating, which meant this movie about small aliens causing havoc could show them more in a devilish light. However, there were still certain boundaries and limits that couldn't be crossed. As if we saw the critters just roaming around killing countless amount of people, then chances are the movie would have been forced into an R rating. So to keep within the rating guidelines, only two people get killed by critters. Yep, just two. These so-called hungry eating machines of doom only eat two people. So to make up for the poor kill count, we see the critters eat two chickens, a cow, and a goldfish. So that way, the American Motion Picture Classification Board was happy. But Peter probably wasn't. 
In fact, all four Critters movies were rated PG-13, which always meant that there was going to be a level of gruesome safety with this franchise. Number three, the first movie's budget. Although Critters may look like a polished special effects movie with heaps of blasts and monster effects for the whole family to enjoy, the movie surprisingly only had a budget of $2 million, which is incredibly low. Keep in mind that Gremlins had a mega budget of $11 million, and yet somehow with such a small amount of money, the filmmakers were still able to make the film work and not make it look cheap for its time. So much so, the movie would go on to make $13 million. However, due to making back a huge sum of money, the budget of Critters 2 only got upgraded to $4 million. And was such a failure, it only made back $3 million in the box office. Ooh, ouch. And thus, this was no doubt the cause of Critters 3 and 4, which were made back to back, to be straight to video releases. Oh well, I guess you win some and you lose some. Number two, there was going to be a web series, but where is it? In 2014, fans of the Critters movies heard the glorious news that they had been waiting for for a long time, that Warner Brothers was going to produce a web series of the 1980s cult horror movie franchise. This news no doubt would have caused lovers of this film series to go back and watch Critters, to get them pumped and in the mood for more new Critters shenanigans. But sadly, to this day, nothing has ever happened. Yep, nearly four years later, and this so-called Critters web series has yet to be produced, and there hasn't been any on-set news or any kind of behind-the-scenes or production photos. No news, no stories, nothing. Along without any information about who will star in it, who will write it, and who will produce it, and so on. Just absolutely nothing. And what's even more baffling is how everyone has equally forgotten the news. The news just sort of came and went, and nothing ever happened about it. And no one has ever said, hang on, what happened to that Critters web series we were promised? Seriously, why have we just been taking this lying down? Why haven't we stood up and said to Warner Brothers, Hey, you promised us this web series. Where is it? We want to see this web series, damn it! Number one, Carrie Elwes turned down starring in a Critters movie. I already mentioned that Leonardo DiCaprio starred in Critters 3 as a young boy called Josh, who was the son of a troubled landlord. However, if the fact that DiCaprio was in a Critters movie wasn't surreal enough, then how about the fact that the role was offered to Carrie Elwes, aka the As You Wish guy from The Princess Bride and that guy from Saw. Elwes revealed on a Saw commentary track that he was offered the role of Josh for Critters 3 but turned it down. But what I find so baffling about this role swap is the fact that the character Josh was a small boy, hence the fact he ended up being played by a fresh-faced DiCaprio. Whereas at the time, Elwes was a whopping 28 years old. Seriously, how does that work? The only theory I have is Elwes was in fact offered a different role, but he just got the characters mixed up and confused. Or the character Josh was originally much older, but was rewritten as a preteen. Because this is the only explanation that I have. Going from a 28 year old man to a kid. This is a very weird situation, and considering this is a film series about little furry aliens who eat everything, that's saying something. Well guys, that was my hungry look into the Critters franchise. I hope that you might have gotten some enjoyment out of it, and now may be left wanting to have a bit of a re-watch of the Critters movies. Or, at least the first one anyway. I think it deserves another viewing. This movie has the tough time of living in the shadow of the impossibly popular Gremlins. But if you're a fan of monster movies and 1980s schlock films, then I say definitely check this film out. Anyway, I'm Minty, and remember, these guys may look cute, but they are not, and they will eat your face off. See ya.
But they are not, and they will eat your face off. See ya. Official, official tissue, 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 official t